Welcome to Mastering Solutions. In this general problem, they tell us that a rock is tossed straight up with a speed of 20 meters per second, and when it returns, it falls into a hole 10 meters deep. For part A, we need to figure out what the rock's velocity is as it hits the bottom of the hole. First, let's draw a picture. So we have our hole here. And one of the things that we have to assume, it's kind of weird if you think about it in real life, but we're assuming that the ball is taking off right from the ground here. Obviously, a person's going to be standing up a little bit, but we're going to forget about that. So it's thrown straight up with an initial speed of 20 meters per second. And we want to figure out what the final velocity is down here at the bottom of the hole. The delta y is, let's say right here, is y equals 0. So the delta y is going to be negative 10. or y final and then y initial. Because right here is where we're saying is our zero point, so obviously a 10 meter hole is gonna be negative 10. So now there's a couple ways that we can go about this. We can go about the time first, part B, and then get that and then plug it back into part A to figure out the velocity. Or we can use a kinematic equation that doesn't require time at all. Either way you go about it, it will give you the exact same answer. I've done it both ways, and it is, like I said, the exact same. So for part A, let's do this way first. So we'll use V final squared is equal to V initial squared plus 2 times the acceleration times the delta Y. To isolate V final, we'll take the square root of both sides of the equation. So that gives us V initial squared plus two times the acceleration times delta Y square root. So V initial squared, we said is a positive 20 meters per second. And then we'll add to that two times the acceleration. In this case, it's a negative G, so a negative 9.8 meters per second squared. G is pointing downward, that's why it's negative. And then we're going to have a delta y of what we talked about already in negative 10 meters. So we'll take the square root of a 20 squared plus 2 times a negative 9.8 times a negative 10. So that gives us 24.41. So 24.41. And if you remember, we're going in the negative y direction. So this should be a negative 24.41 for the final velocity. And for this part, for part a, we're going to round it to a negative 24 meters per second. I keep the rounding just so I don't get rounding errors if I plug that into other parts of the problem. And now for part b, just like for part a, there's several ways that we can approach this. One way is you could use y final is equal to y initial plus vit plus one half at squared. And then what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to use a quadratic formula to solve for t, which is a pain in the butt, right? We have our calculator, so it's not as bad, but there's a much simpler way. So let me show you. If you use the kinematic equations, the beauty of them is it doesn't matter which one you use. If you have all of the variables that you need for a given equation, it will give you the exact same answer. The one that we'll be using is V final in the y direction, of course, is equal to V initial in the y direction plus acceleration times time. Acceleration in this case is, of course, going to be a negative G. But let's first move over by subtracting velocity initial. So we have v final minus v initial is equal to acceleration times time. Then we'll divide a from both sides. So time is equal to v final minus v initial divided by a. And as we said, the acceleration in this case is going to be gravity. So I'll change that to a negative g. So now when we plug in our numbers, we'll get v final in this case we found is a negative 24 meters per second. We'll subtract the initial velocity which we said was 20 meters per second and then we'll divide by a negative g or negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So when we go to our calculator what we have is a negative 
24. I'm going to use the expanded one, so 0.41, just so I don't get a rounding error. And then we'll subtract from it negative 20 for the initial velocity, and then divide all that by a negative 9.8 for g. So the time that we give is 4.53 seconds. So if you go through like I have and do the other way, the kinematic form, you'll see that this is the exact same time given with a much simpler way. So again, it's just the principle of if you have a list of all the variables with a list of what you need, you can find an equation and it doesn't matter if you have one that has all those criteria, it will give you the exact same answer. So here are your answers for part A. We have a final velocity of a negative 24 meters per second. And then the time of how long it's in the air is 4.53 seconds. And of course, you could round that to 4.5 if you would like.